These are the airplane dimensions for the Boeing 767-300. Length, height, and wingspan. These are the weight ranges. The maximum zero fuel weight. The maximum taxi weight. Maximum takeoff weight. And the maximum landing weight. The 767-300 is powered by engines from General Electric. The engines have a high bypass ratio and a full authority digital engine control. The engines supply 62,100 pounds of takeoff thrust. Each engine has a 90 kVA generator. The 767-300 can fly medium to long range flights. Versions of the 767-300 can fly 6,200 nautical miles with a full passenger load. If a flight starts in London, the airplane can fly to destinations in the circles on the left. If the flight starts in New York, the airplane can fly to destinations in the circles on the right. The maximum altitude is 43,100 feet. And the maximum operating speed is 0.86 Mach. Entry and service doors are in the forward, mid, and aft areas of the passenger compartment. An emergency escape door is provided aft of each wing and is used for egress only. There are three cargo doors. Forward, aft, and bulk. An APU in the tail supplies electrical power on the ground and in flight at all altitudes. The APU also supplies bleed air on the ground and up to a minimum of approximately 17,000 feet, but may be available at higher altitudes depending upon operating conditions and airplane speed. Special coatings on the windshields repel rain. Windshield wipers improve visibility during taxi, approach, and landing. The 767-300 flight controls, operated by the hydraulic systems, control pitch, roll, and yaw. The trailing edge flaps and leading edge slats normally use the hydraulic systems to operate. The fuel system has three tanks, a center tank, and two main wing tanks. Total fuel capacity is more than 72,000 kilograms. The 767-300 has three landing gear with four wheels on each main gear and two wheels on the nose gear. Each main gear wheel has a multiple disc brake. Anti-skid protection is provided to each brake. The nose wheels can be steered with the nose wheel steering tiller or with the rudder pedals. The passenger compartment can be configured to meet the individual needs of airlines. 218 passengers can be accommodated in a three-class configuration. Lavatories are located throughout the cabin. 
They can be rearranged within these areas known as flex zones to suit changing root requirements. Similarly, the galleys are located here and can also be rearranged within these flex zones. Emergency equipment is located throughout the cabin. Emergency slides are installed at each door. As with other jet transports, the flight deck has the overhead panels, the glare shield, forward panels, forward aisle stand, control stand, and the aft aisle stand. CRTs display the basic flight instruments and navigation data. The Attitude Director Indicator, or ADI, combines the basic flight instruments and enunciations into one display. The Horizontal Situation Indicator, or HSI, displays route and navigation information. The center displays show engine indication, systems information, and crew alerting. The standby flight instruments are electromechanical and LCD indicators. The radio communication system consists of the usual VHF and HF systems. The VHF and HF systems provide the option to send and receive data link messages. The flight data recorder automatically turns on when either engine is operating or the airplane is in flight. It records data for the most recent 25 hours of operation. Prior to every flight, a member of the flight crew or designated maintenance person will perform this pre-flight inspection to verify the airplane is safe for flight. Throughout the inspection, you should look for obvious damage or any indication of defects that would require a more thorough inspection. In cold weather, make sure all surfaces are clear of frost, ice, and snow. Note. Airplane configuration shown in this program may be different from yours due to customer options. Begin your pre-flight inspection at the left side of the nose and proceed in a clockwise direction. First, examine the total air temperature probe, the two pitot probes, the angle of attack vane, and the ice detector probe. Then check the condition of the nose gear wheels and tires. Be sure that the shock strut has the proper extension. At least two inches of polished area should be visible. Check the condition of the steering actuators and linkage. And make sure the towing lever is in its normal position. Verify that the parking brake on and set lights are lit. See that the taxi lights and those landing gear lights are clean and unbroken. Verify that the nose landing gear doors are secure and not damaged. Examine the hydraulic cylinders and lines for fluid leaks. Make sure that the gear pin is not installed. At the nose of the airplane, confirm that the forward equipment center access door is closed. And look for visible damage on the skin, radome, and the lightning conductor strips. 
Continuing around the nose, check Total Air Temperature Probe, the two pitot probes, the angle of attack vein, and the ice detector probe. Verify the condition of the crew oxygen thermal relief indicator. It should be green and intact. Check the condition of the APU remote control panel. Make sure the main equipment access door is closed and latched. Check that the electrical service panel is closed and latched if not in use. Confirm that the number one right passenger door is closed and locked if not in use. The alternate static port should be smooth and clean. The forward cargo door should be closed and locked if not in use. You can confirm this by checking the witness ports along the bottom of the door. The cam marks must be aligned. In the center of the cargo door, the two pressure relief doors should be closed and flush with the surface. On the lower fuselage, check the condition of the antennas. Check the wing illumination light and the number two right passenger door. The door should be closed and locked if not in use. Look at the inboard leading edge slat. It should be clean and undamaged. The landing light and runway turnoff light should be clean and unbroken. Examine the anti-collision strobe light for damage. Check the ram air inlet, the air conditioning pack access door, and the ram air exhaust. They should be clear and undamaged. Look for damage to the wing to body fairing and the under wing surface. Check for leaks from the fuel tank access panels and sump drains. The fuel measuring sticks should be locked and flush. Next look at the main landing gear. Check the wheels and tires for any damage or excessive wear. Look at the length remaining on the brake wear indicator pins for each wheel. Remember the parking brake must be set when checking the wear indicators. If any indicator pins are flush with the brake flange, notify maintenance. On the shock strut, at least two inches of polished area should be visible, indicating proper extension. Look for signs of excessive fluid leakage. Make sure the gear lock pins and streamers are removed. And the main gear hydraulic actuator shows no signs of leaks. Moving around the gear, check the hydraulic lines and tilt actuator. There should be no signs of leaks or damage. Next, look at the engine exhaust. It should be clear and undamaged. Inspect the area for oil, metal particles, or damage to the turbine blades. Check the engine strut. It should be undamaged, and all access panels closed and latched. The engine cowling must be secured and the thrust reverser sleeves closed. Look for any evidence of fluid leaks below the engine. Inspect the inlet cowl, fan blades, and spinner for damage or obstruction. Confirm that all ports and vents are clear. Check the leading edge slats. They should be clean and undamaged. Check that the lower wing surface fuel tank access panels are secure and there are no fluid leaks. Make sure all fuel measuring sticks are locked and flush. Inspect the condition of the position and anti-collision strobe lights. Make sure the surge tank vent scoop is clear and the pressure relief valve is flush. Check that the static dischargers are in place. Check that the fuel jettison nozzle is clear and undamaged. As you walk along the trailing edge of the wing, check the outboard aileron, flaps, flap fairings, and the inboard aileron for damage. Continue aft along the fuselage. Check that the hydraulic servicing panel door is latched and there are no signs of fluid leaks. Confirm that the rat compartment door is secured. Check the condition of the number three right emergency exit door. Check the condition of the aft antennas. 
Next, look at the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. It should be clean and free of damage. Verify that the aft cargo door is closed and locked. The pressure relief doors should be flush with the surface. On the lower fuselage, check the lavatory service panel door. It should be closed, latched, and show no signs of fluid leakage. Check that the potable water service panel door is closed and is not leaking. The number four passenger door should be closed and locked if not in use. Looking aft, check the tail skid. It should be extended and not damaged. Check the stabilizer compartment access door. It should be closed and latched. Look for any damage to the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, elevator, and rudder. Make sure the APU service and access doors are closed. And confirm that there are no fluid leaks from the APU exhaust and drains. Check that the anti-collision strobe lights are undamaged. Continue forward along the fuselage. Examine the condition of the pressurization outflow valve. There should be no visible signs of damage. The number four left passenger door and bulk cargo doors should be closed with the handles flush if not in use. Look back at the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. It should be clean and free of damage. Walking next to the fuselage, you should see no evidence of damage or fluid leaks. The positive pressure relief valve should be flush with the fuselage and the static port smooth and clean. Moving forward, the number three left emergency exit door should be closed and locked. Check the air-driven hydraulic pump exhaust and access doors. You should see no evidence of damage or fluid leaks. The drain mast should be clean and undamaged. Next, inspect the left main gear and tires for any damage or excessive wear. Check the condition of the tilt actuator and hydraulic lines. Inspect the brake wear pins. The shock strut should have at least a two inch polished section and no signs of excessive fluid leakage. Make sure the gear lock pins have been removed. As you continue along the left wing, note the condition of the trailing edge flaps and the inboard aileron. The outboard lower wing surface panels should be closed with no visible leaks. The fuel measuring sticks must be locked and flush. Confirm that the fuel jettison nozzle is clear and undamaged. Check that the surge tank vent scoop is clear and the pressure relief valve is flush. Check outboard ailerons for damage and verify that all static dischargers are in place. Examine the position and anti-collision strobe lights. Next, Look at the leading edge slats. They should be clean and undamaged. Moving inboard, check the fueling control panel door. It should be closed and latched. At the left engine, follow the same procedure as for the other engine. Examine the strut. There should be no signs of damage and all access panels closed and latched. Check the thrust reverser and fan cowling. Examine the intake cowl, blades, and spinner. Check all ports and vents. Check the exhaust area, core, and turbine blades. The left wing under surface should be undamaged. Check for leaks from the fuel tank access panels and sump drains. The fuel measuring sticks should be locked and flush. Look for damage to the wing to body fairing. Check the ram air exhaust the air conditioning pack door and pneumatic ground connection doors should be secured if not in use. The ram air inlet should be clear and undamaged. Check the drain mast for damage. As you proceed along the fuselage, look at the landing light and runway turnoff light. They should be clean and unbroken. Check the number two left passenger door. It should be closed and locked if not in use. Make sure the wing illumination light is undamaged. Examine the condition of the negative pressure relief vent door and the positive pressure relief valves plus static port. The cabin and alternate static ports should be smooth and clean. 
Throughout the exterior pre-flight inspection, you are observing the condition of the airplane and checking for damage. The components of the airplane are acceptable if there are no visual indications of problems that require a more thorough inspection by the ground crew. A thorough pre-flight inspection is an essential part of the preparation for a safe and successful flight.